A replica, you can see there, a replica's just come up online. So it's replicated. Hi there, welcome to Cloud Native Skunkworks. This is a look at distributed storage on microcates. What's really exciting about this is that distributed storage no longer becomes this cluster somewhere that you connect to or this really difficult set of concepts that have no real meaning to everyday developers, but instead with the power of Maya Store and microcates, we bring a first class storage solution right to your fingertips on your local machine. So it's pretty exciting. Now, before we jump into it, let's just recap. Why should I care about distributed storage? Well, if you're running a MySQL database and you have workloads connecting to that, you might want to replicate that database. So the PVC that backs that is backed up somewhere else. And this can be done either using an asynchronous streaming solution or writing via proxy in real time. The actual underlying implementation isn't important. What's important is that as an engineer, you know that you've got a backup of that database. And if something realistic, like half the cluster fails, you can continuously keep going, right? What's the point of running stateful workloads in your cluster if you can't recover them uh, at a failure point? So there's a bunch of use cases, but thinking of some of the simplest, if we want to be able to run something like configuration under a load balancer or anything that's not inside of a, a config map and a bit more file system based data, then you know, you're gonna want to have those PVCs with an option to have replication. Host path is great, but let's remember if that node never comes back up again, we just lose all that data, it just spins off into nowhere. So having the ability to replicate that data out to other nodes in real time for recovery and resilience reasons is really exciting. And so it's perfect for us to start being able to use this at the local workstation level so that when we go to a distributed computing setting, we've already tested it out, right? I already know how replication is going to work. I understand that having HA backups means that a part of my testing strategy will include being able to actually test, say, we're knocking over a workload, seeing the PVC freeze on that node, but it will reattach to a replica as the new leader. Before we get started, I wanted to acknowledge what Maya story is, because you're going to hear me saying this about a hundred times in this video. Maya store is a storage driver from Maya Data, who formed the Open EBS project, which is now going through the phases of Sandbox to potential incubation in the CNCF. What's interesting about Maya Store is it's the next generation over C Store, where they're building a much more Kate's native control plane with primitives that make a lot more sense inside of Kubernetes, not to mention leveraging NVMe OF, a bunch of other performance improvements as well. I believe it's actually written in Rust. It's really interesting because they're going up against huge storage providers as an open source project, yet they're offering the same enterprise grade features such as backups, granular control, the ability uh, to do a bunch of different stuff across clusters as well. So it's really compelling to see that a project like this is getting such a lot of love from the community because it's helping everybody to start to get interested in storage without that uh, bar to cross in those commercial projects. Let's have a look at what I got here today. I'm running on my Windows desktop and I've set up two virtual machines using VMware Workstation. I wanted to make this realistic, right? There's no point in me giving a demo in some really abstract cloud environment. So let's start with two virtual machines. Now these are just running the latest of microcates um, and that's just pulled off the latest branch. So to do that, you would go uh, microcates channel equals latest slash edge. That's because I want to have um, some of the cool new features. At the time of this video, 124 still isn't out with Kubernetes, so we haven't yet merged all this stuff into our stable branch, so it's not the default option. But that'll be a couple of weeks out. I mean, look, it's the 16th of April today, so I think the release is supposed to be by the, by the beginning of May. So the first thing that I need to do here is I need to add this node on the right. Now, one of the things that you'll need to know that is if you're running in virtual machines, you'll need to add the host name of the other virtual machine and its IP address because when this machine tries to join, it will tell the control plane its host name saying, hey, my name is Ubuntu or whatever, we, whatever it might be here, bar in this case. And this machine, because there's no DNS on my Windows computer, won't know where it is. So that's something I did behind the scenes is I said, hey, this bar host name is equal to the IP address of this machine. And the second thing you'll need to do, and probably before that, is to switch your VM's behavior from natting to bridged. When you put it into the bridged mode, this means that your router will give it an IP address and it means that you can connect between VMs. So bridge mode is important. So what we can see here is that that node has successfully uh, joined the cluster. Let's just go Kube control get uh, nodes. And we'll just watch that for a moment. So you can see that bar has joined the party here, which is great. 
So what I'm going to do throughout this conversation here is I'm going to bring up a few architectural diagrams and we can talk these through whilst we're working on this. So right now we've got two virtual machines, both running microcates. Okay, there we go. And those microcates installations are running inside of snaps. Snaps are cool because they give us app armor, they give us sandboxing, and the delivery system upload, updates them on a nightly basis. So this looks good. The next thing I want to do is I want to export my config so that I can look at it in canines because that's my UI of choice for this sort of stuff. So I'm going to put that into my cube config. And now we can see in canines, we've got our basic cluster. Now microcates out of the box behavior is to give you Calico um, as your default CNI. And then you also get um, a controller for those nodes. So you get a Calico node on each Kubernetes node as a daemon set. Let's go ahead and make it happen. I'm going to do one little cheat, and that is because I'm running in a VN and I've turned on NVMe TCP just a moment ago, I'm going to go skip kernel check because this is going to check um, that we've got it added in for reboot. But in our case, we're just doing it uh, in the terminal with mod probe. So next time we reboot, we'll want to persist that. So what's happening right now is that MyaStore is turning on. You can see that there are two prereqs. You've got the skip kernel check, which relates to the NVMe TCP module being turned on that I just mentioned. But you've also got a huge pages check. So we're making sure that huge pages are turned on. And if you don't have them turned on, that's not a problem. We'll give you the help message on how you can get those spun up. So now what's happening in the background is that we have Maya Store being deployed. So let's just open up this in canines. And we can also go through the architecture whilst we're talking. So first things first, how does Maya Store look? And how does the components at the Kates layer interact with the components at the machine layer? So first and foremost, Maya Store deploys two primary planes. You have the control plane, MOAC. And then you also have, as a part of that, the data plane. This is a simplification, but effectively, this is what you get with Maya Store. You also have etcd that gets thrown into the mix as the way of storing data. And then you'll have some of the CSI components as well. Well, what we do to make this a batteries included experience is we set up the actual disks for you. Now, rather than using real disks, we're using a sparse image. So you could call that the data image. This data image is what is used as your block storage device. And that is managed and mounted by the CSI driver. So you have two primary pods. You have the CSI driver per node. And you also get the MyaStore Nexus pod. So the CSI driver manages the publish, unpublish, attach, detach events. The Nexus pod manages the replication and the proxying of data between nodes when you have a replication factor turned on. I don't want to go too much into that, but it's important to at least have a cursory glance at what these things are. If you look on the left here, you can see what I'm talking about. This MyaStore pod is the Nexus pod here. And then you've got that CSI um, controller, so that CSI agent here, one per node as well. So those are the traditional Kates-based interoperable mechanisms for storage. We've also got a few other things like the REST API, some of the core agents API, and these are all internal parts of the MyaStore topology. So what's happening right now is that you can see MyaStore is just spinning up, which is great. In the meantime, I mentioned this was a batteries included operation. It's not just us creating this data image. What that data image actually does is it gives you a block storage device on your local machine of 20 gigs uh, out of the box. And you can tune that. If you're on an IoT device, if you're in the data center, you might want to flip that either way. Also, you might have a question mark straight away of, well, what do I do with my dev slash SDB? What do I do with my attached NVMe storage? Well, we'll get to that now. The second part of what we're doing here is, as well as setting up the cluster, is we're also making sure that the relationship between the node and MyaStore is set up. And that is through the custom resource called a MyaStore pool. The MyaStore pool will effectively map the drives that are attached on the local node to MyaStore. So what we'll do is we sort of imagine it like that. You'll say something like disks, and the disks for this one will be data slash, you know, my image, MyaStore.image file. 
This is really interesting because MyStore actually has a, a bunch of different things that it can take, such as um, you can create in-memory disks, RAM disks, uh, you can give it async disks, and uh, a few other options as well. But in this case, we're already preloading this so that when you create or when you have a Maya pool, uh, a Maya store pool created for you, it knows exactly where to attach to, to the block storage. So this is the first custom resource that you'll be able to interact with if you want to start modifying things. Because just as I mentioned, just down here with attached disks, you can go ahead and add additional attached disks into this. And suddenly you're adding this immense amount um, of a very easily configurable storage into your cluster. So let's just go ahead and have a quick look. You'll see that we've got two Maya store pools that have set up. I've got uh, bar, which is one of my host names, and Ubuntu, which is my other one. I think Ubuntu is my control plane here. You'll see that they both have 20 gigs and none of that's used. So the second thing that's really interesting here is that we also create some opinionated storage classes for you. So if you look at our storage classes, you'll get two out of the box. Maya store and Maya store three. No points for guessing what these do, but Maya store is your effectively host path single replica, and Maya store three is your three replica class. Okay, so that's kind of how that looks. And then once this is all initialized, you can go ahead and start using PVCs. So let's give that an actual go. We've got our cluster got our storage system set up. Let's go ahead and actually deploy a workload that uses a uh, uses PVC. So uh, Nginx deployment PVC is my go-to on the Kubernetes IO website. Let's go down and grab the persistent volume claim. In fact, if we do a here's one I made earlier, I think that we can see it. Oh, maybe not. Okay, let's grab that. I'm going to change the storage class to Maya store. We'll just use one replica for this demo. And we can always turn that up and play around with it later on. We can make uh, two replicas. Uh, this is a two node cluster. So really, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to go up to three because I don't have three separate nodes. And let's grab the pod. And in fact, let's just put that in the same folder, same file even. Oh, I have, a, I have a problem on my virtual machines with my disk uh, not letting me, my, my keyboard not letting me translate certain keys. Okay, so I think we're more or less there. So kube control, micro Kate's kube control because we package it with. Okay, and let's get that pod created. Um, go back to pod. Oh, let's try again. Okay, so what I would expect to happen now is if I go to the storage class, I go back to my MyStore pool, and we go back to our pods. You can see container creating. Let's go to PVCs. We can see that we've got a three gig PVC that's just been provisioned. If we go to the volume attachment, we can see that this is attached with the MyStore attacher, so the CSI that I mentioned. So if we think about this CSI here. That's the attach command that's running. We go back up to here, the pod is now provisioned, which is really cool. And we can see that we have three gigs of our Maya store capacity used. So that's uh, it's pretty exciting. Let's do one more thing whilst we're looking at this demo. Let's take the three node, or rather the three-way replica, and let's change and modify that so we have a Maya store two. So we can have one uh, primary and one replica. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to storage classes. And I am going to grab my store three. So, microcates, cube control, get storage class, my store three, o yaml, my store two. Okay, let's just change everything in here from three to two. And you can see as well the protocol here. You can choose to use iSCSI, but NVMEF is much, much faster and is the default in my store. Okay, let's now apply that. Now, this is interesting. It's because um, this is taken from a, um, from a previous storage class and some of the metadata I need to remove. It has a resource version and a UID, which are referencing an active resource, which needs to be removed. Um, 
Let's have a quick look. What have I done here? Oh, it's still called Maya Store 3. That doesn't help. Okay. And now let's just um, try making a new PVC. We're going to call this one Maya Store 2, and I'm going to call this Claim 2, and I'm going to make a new pod as well. Okay. Let's take this pod. Okay. Okay, and away we go. So now we can see that we have Maya Store Pod 2 provisioning. We can see that we also have the claim on the Maya Store 2 storage class. Now, interestingly, what we should see as well is because we've distributed this, is that we'll see a replica. You can see there, a replica has just come up online. So it's replicated from our primary control plane where we would scheduled, or, and then it's now moved over and created a follower on the other disk. So that effectively shows how Maya Store is able to give us extremely simple uh, distributed storage within about, what, five minutes. So in conclusion, I think that this has shown how simple it is to get Maya Store up and running. What's great about the OpenEBS Maya Store implementation is how its Kubernetes primitives are so simple to interact with and represent the underlying host storage system. And as you'll see with microcates, that kind of marriage together is a super simple on Rails DX for distributed storage. I hope you've enjoyed this. I really enjoyed making it. Please do like, subscribe, leave a comment, go test it out. Join our Slack channel, Microcates, uh, on the Kubernetes Slack, and let us know your experiences. Looking forward to hearing back from you. And in the meantime, thanks again. Bye-bye.